It was a sunny morning in the port town of Gaul in Sri Lanka, and the day was dawning over the beautiful beach resort. There was a stillness over the ocean as a newly married couple wandered carefree along the sand. Two hours later, the scene was very different. Homes, roads and railways had been destroyed. Sharp shrapnel littered the coastline. Over 5,000 people had died. That was the day of the great tsunami which devastated Southeast Asia. In the weeks and months that followed, plenty of people cried out, where was God that morning? What kind of God would allow this? Why does God allow natural disasters to happen? Our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, true God and true man, is not afraid of these questions. And in fact, in one gospel passage, he tackles head on the subject of natural disasters. From the words of our Lord, it is clear that over at Siloam, in the south of Jerusalem, there was a tower being built, possibly to help defend the town, or possibly just something for King Herod to show off with. Whatever the case, a disaster hit that tower, and it fell to the ground, killing 18 people. Our Lord used an example all the disciples knew about. There was probably no one at fault here. The tower most likely fell due to an earthquake. What does our Lord have to say about this disaster? How will he deal with it? What does he reply? Let's look at what he says. He responds with a question. Do you think that those 18 men who were killed when the tower fell at Siloam were any more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem. So as you can see, our Lord doesn't choose to give some kind of explanation for why the disaster happened. He doesn't take that route at all. Sure, he, he makes it clear that the people who were killed didn't die because they were worse sinners. But the key point is, the key point is, Disasters happen, so be prepared. Don't focus on trying to explain the workings of Almighty God. That won't get you anywhere. Rather, take a look at your soul and ask yourself, when disaster strikes my life, which will happen, will my soul be prepared for it? Am I one of the guilty? Then our Lord closes his speech with those words that cut to the bone. Unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. What is our Lord saying? Is our Lord saying that unless you repent and get right with God, you're going to die in an actual disaster like those guys at Siloam. No, that's not the point he's making. Because natural disasters don't discriminate between just and sinners. We all know that. The word he uses is perish. Unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. In the word of God, this kind of language isn't about natural death like dying of old age. Think of John 3.16, where our Lord says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So to perish is to lose out on eternal life in heaven. To perish is to be separated from Almighty God forever and ever. That means spending eternity in a dreadful place, which our Lord calls hell. In Matthew 25, 41, our Lord describes hell as fire, as a fire which never goes out. That tower at Siloam, our Lord is telling us, fell on 18 people. And those 18 people perished. They ended up in hell. And what is shocking 
is that he says to his audience, Do you think that they were any worse sinners than everyone else in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, they were not. Wow, how many souls go to hell. Let us praise and thank our Lord and Saviour that he is giving us this warning today. And what's more, he tells us, he shows us how we can avoid that terrible fate. And the answer is repentance. A lot of Catholics have got this idea that when Almighty God judges us all, he's going to rank us in a list according to good deeds. With Mother Teresa near the top, Hitler, Stalin near the bottom, and that the Lord is going to make a cutoff point somewhere in the somewhere at some point, maybe ten percent the way down, or or wherever you want to put it in the middle somewhere. Everyone above that line is going to heaven. Everyone below that line is going to purgatory, or everyone below that line is going to hell, or something. My friends, our Lord tells us today that the final judgment. There's not going to be a line going, going across. It's more like there's going to be a line going down the middle. The dividing line won't be how many good deeds you've racked up. The dividing point will be whether or not you have repented, been to confession. Unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. But you know, this isn't bad news our Lord is telling us. This is wonderful and amazing good news because it shows us that our faith is our, our faith, the Catholic faith, isn't an exclusive religion for people who are always doing good deeds and love doing good deeds. No, our faith is a religion for sinful people who realize their need to repent. Christianity isn't about what we're doing for God. It's about receiving forgiveness, a free gift from God, a gift received through the Catholic Church he founded. Seriously thinking about the reality of hell can stir up a holy fear within us, which can lead us to repentance and true conversion from sin. We should be doing the Stations of the Cross. We should meditate on our Lord's Passion. We should do all these things to stir up the need to repent. But also, we should think about hell and the serious possibility that you and I, that we might perish unless we repent. Repentance isn't some vague feeling. Repentance must be for concrete things, whether it's for sins against God, against your neighbour, against yourself. Every night before going to bed, ask our Lord to show you where you have fallen short that day, this day, against his commandments, where you've offended him. That's the examination of conscience. It takes three minutes, but it can make the difference between going to bed as God's beloved child or going to bed as his enemy. And of course, we need to go to confession because when the rubber hits the road, confession is a real sign of repentance. And that's why... When his judgment day comes, those who have been to confession every week, or perhaps even just every month, will make up the great number of those who are received into paradise. Our Lord's words shock us. Many bad things happen in everyone's life. Illnesses, natural disasters, financial tragedies, all kinds of bad stuff happens. And our Lord doesn't want to be want us to spend all our time searching for why God has allowed this to happen. Instead, he wants all these things to be motivations to get us to repent more and more, to return to him more and more. We need to take our Lord's word seriously. Unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Life is not a bed of roses. It's a veil of tears. It's a veil of tears. We need to repent. We need to go to confession frequently. And we need to allow all the natural disasters of this life, viruses included, to be impulses, motivations to repent. And to thank God that we have been given another day, another hour, another minute to get serious about this repentance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.